I'm Rebecca. I hear you're joining up with Main's crew. Welcome back to Marvelous Videos. I'm Rylan. The popular series Cyberpunk Edge Runners by Studio Trigger is being praised by viewers for its rich world building, moving plot, and captivating cast of characters. Edge Runners is a unique animation that draws inspiration from CD Projekt Red's computer game Cyberpunk 2077. It tells the terrible tale of David Martinez as his life swiftly disintegrates after his mother is killed in a car accident. David, who is unable to cover his living bills or student fees, is lured into a world of edge running by a woman by the name of Lucy. His acquisition of the Sandivistan, a military-grade cybernetic spine enhancement, makes him an immediate asset to the outcast mercenary squad. Before we go further into our explanation, we just have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is just a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thanks! Now then, let's begin. David joins an organization of edge runners led by Maine. One of those members is Rebecca. She is vulgar and impolite, frequently observed making obscene hand motions and laughing at the mayhem that she participates in. She first reveled in the chaos caused by the wrecking of the Corpo Elite, whom the edge running gang had targeted during their crime spree. Rebecca wasn't very well liked in the first half of edge runners, but by the end, she had grown to be one of the series' most adored characters thanks to her everlasting dedication to the people she cares about. The main characters of cyberpunk edge runners experience a never-ending string of misfortune, following in the footsteps of 2077. In keeping with the theme, Rebecca also experiences sorrow when her brother Pillar is killed while battling a cyber psycho. She expresses her sorrow in a manner consistent with her personality, resorting with raucous rage and frenzied gunshots. After this, Rebecca starts to develop more as a person. She used to get caught up in the chaos until one of her crew members pulled her out of whatever perilous scenario the group was in. After the time jump in the middle of the book, Rebecca teases the group's newest member with affection since her wild exuberance is reminiscent of her former actions. Although her crude attitude is unaffected by his mental development, she is more aware of her surroundings and actively helps David when he starts to experience cyberpsychotic episodes. The Spectacular First becomes aware of Rebecca's growing fondness of David after the time jump when she makes an effort to flirt with him during a post-heist party. She doesn't really make an effort to hide her unfulfilled infatuation with him, telling Kiwi that she is unaware that David wasn't attracted to her outgoing nature. Rebecca made sure to be helpful, despite knowing he didn't see her in a romantic way, even if that means confronting him about his quickly deteriorating mental state. After she admits that she didn't want to see David turn into a cyber psycho, she reveals a moment of weakness. Fans could now easily understand her motivations throughout the rest of Edge Runners as a result of this fresh understanding of her emotions. When she screamed about being ignored, it was no longer seen as a temper tantrum because she wasn't getting her way, but rather as a sign of worry for someone close to her. Rebecca's significant role in the series finale played a major role in her ascent in the popularity rankings among the cast as the show continued. After the death of important group members like Maine and Dorio, Lucy shifts her attention away from the realm of edge running to concentrate on a hidden threat to David. She works alone on this life-saving initiative while keeping it a secret from David. Despite the fact that she understandably did not want to add to his stress, given his gradual onset of cyberpsychosis, Lucy's seclusion made her a prime target for Faraday, who may kidnap her and use her for leverage against David. Faraday was able to direct the Edge Runners to a convoy that was carrying a prototype of Militech's most recent cyber skeleton with Kiwi's assistance. Even though Lucy managed to escape Faraday's custody just long enough to inform David that he was now working for Arasaka, she was unable to stop him from using the suit because he was already connected to it and ready to use it to save her. The conclusion of Cyberpunk Edge Runners features a fatal confrontation between Arasaka and the Edge Runners as they struggle to save Lucy before David becomes a cyberpsychosis. Rebecca serves as the lone voice of reason among the remaining edge runners during the build-up to the confrontation with David. She was passionately against David using the prototype cyber skeleton because she had previously seen him go through episodes of cyberpsychosis. Despite Rebecca's initial reluctance, she steps up when David reminds her of Maine's philosophy as an edge runner. That is, everyone should have a chance. When Rebecca vowed to support David and his mission in a way that other characters were unable to, Rebecca's popularity increased. She stayed by his side during the psychotic episodes and gave him medication in an effort to maintain his mental stability for as long as feasible. Because of her early reservations about seeing him turn into the guy who killed her brother, her underlying loyalty is rendered all the more depressing. Rebecca still shows relief following Lucy's rescue, despite her love interest in David as she knew it would help David feel better. Her concern for his welfare 
persisted right up until her tragic demise. Oh, David, my man, what's going on? Everything good? Rebecca was an impressive addition to cyberpunk edge runners anime. Rebecca was a Night City edge runner who was often at odds with her brother Pillar. Although their daily life was tense outside of work, because they would constantly fight, the two siblings frequently teamed up with Maine and his crew to carry out mercenary jobs. However, because of Pillar's provocative behavior, she eventually decided that she would be the one to kill her brother someday. Their squad was hired to enter the Biotechnica's Night City's headquarters in order to obtain confidential financial records and intelligence at some point before 2076, the day Sasha Yokoliva died. Before sending Sasha, the crew's net runner, to penetrate the structure, they had cocktails in the afterlife. During the limo heist, Rebecca first met David Martinez and began working with him. She attempted to divert Maxim by spilling alcohol on him and sensually cleaning it off. But this failed when he noticed the key was missing. Maxim hurled derogatory remarks at Rebecca, to which she responded that he was weird. After Pillar was later slain by a cyber psycho, Rebecca became enraged and attempted to rush the cyber psycho on her own before being stopped by the rest of Maine's crew. Rebecca met Lucy again during the attack on the Corpo Plaza and expressed her gratitude to her for being safe for David's sake before being killed by Adam Smasher shortly after, saying F you in her final moments. <laughs> Who is Rebecca? Exploring her extensive lore. Rebecca from the Cyberpunk Edge Runner series has established herself as a fan favorite because she is feisty, unpredictable, and skilled with a shotgun. Rebecca, a supporting character with little screen time, is equally as beloved as David and Lucy, the protagonist and deuteragonist. The video game developer first rejected her concept, thus the developers had no idea just how popular or successful she would become. The justification given was that her innocent appearance stood in stark contrast to the rest of the party and was simply inappropriate for Night City. Unfortunately, Studio Trigger disregarded CD Projekt Red's objections and firmly defended the decision to preserve her character design, even stating that the lolly must stay because she is the best girl. While I did laugh out loud when I first read that, I also had to admire Studio Trigger's tenacity in maintaining the integrity of her character design. They obviously recognized something in Rebecca that CDPR did not, and their goals for her went beyond simply using her as a lolly in a cyberpunk setting. So today, we're going to go over some of Rebecca's character traits that you might have missed, and why I believe that her design is actually a lot more considered than you might assume. Because of how closely her design ties to the grand themes that cyberpunk edgerunners bring to the table, we must first develop all of those themes. The mantra is high tech now living. Cyberpunk is about the social injustice and deceptive promises of mega corporations. You have no option but to put your own interests first in a city at night where hopelessness is the only thing you can breathe. This selfishness is repeatedly emphasized in the show and is shown as a survival strategy rather than a flaw. Whether a friend or a foe, Maine, Kiwi, Lucy, and Faraday all have this selfishness in common. However, there are also people like Rebecca, who is described as an edge runner with a strong temper and a love-hate connection with her brother. But as we get to know her better, we quickly come to the conclusion that she is the best ride or die the Night City has to offer. The rarity of Night City, Rebecca's desire to stick with the team to the bitter end, and to love David without conditions, even if that goes unanswered, is a testament to how devoted, compassionate, and selfless she truly is. We witnessed Rebecca's unrestrained behavior after her brother was killed, as her grief and rage overtook her. She was obviously very close to her brother, and one of the show's most understated passages is when she mimics his showmanship by wowing the crowds with her gun prowess. Even though the incident was brief, only about five seconds, it was nonetheless a really moving and bittersweet moment. We already know that her feisty character would prevent her from crying out of sadness. Therefore, this was her method of coping with the loss of her brother. She did it as a way to think of him and perhaps find some solace. In a nutshell, she is an edge runner who genuinely cares about other people. One that swims against the current, and I believe that that was the point of the designers when they were trying to make her character design. Her entire persona is a paradox on the loose. Her diminutive size and innocent demeanor imply vulnerability, while her pink and toy-like weaponry contribute to her ostensibly innocent appearance, although no one would describe her as weak or innocent. It's simply impossible to be an edge runner in Night City with those qualities and wish to remain alive. Do you recall seeing her use that shotgun? Although she gives off the impression of fragility, Due to her pale skin and delicate features, she is actually quite tough, if she does say so herself. Rebecca most certainly does not hold back when it comes to using profanity, or even physical force for that matter. However, 
All of her physical characteristics clash with her fiery nature, and underneath all of that bluster is a character that is selfless and kind and stands in opposition to everything that is wrong with Night City. Rebecca's good intentions run closer to the toxic atmosphere that plagues Night City, whether it be via selfishness, brutality, or betrayal for personal benefit. However, going beyond deceit and treachery in People's Night Metropolis is being characterized as an illusion of opportunity. Although it appears to be a large city with powerful technologies blazing brightly into the night, it is actually overrun by corruption, crime, and violence. This illusion master is effectively conveyed in the painful scenario with Rebecca and David in the cyberpunk ending. Ironically, David's mother had always wanted him to rise up the corporate ladder and to the top of a Rasika tower, and on his suicide mission, he ironically fulfilled her request while dressed as a chromed out cyber psycho. His illusion was already heartbreakingly depressing, but Rebecca's reaction elevated the intensity of the scene's emotional impact. Rebecca only displays melancholy in the context throughout the entire series. She has been joyful, angry, excited, angry, bewildered, very angry, and angry, but never dejected. Even after her brother was killed on the streets, not when the captain of her crew Maine passed away, and not when Kiwi turned on the team. Since she realized it was too late for him to save himself, she was only here in front of the person she loved unselfishly and was prepared to follow him to the bitter end, with nothing more than her willingness to remain by his side. Cyberpunk Edgerunners excels at conveying complicated emotions and narratives using quick facial expressions or even brief five-second scenes, which is why we absolutely love Rebecca's character so much, because she served as the designer's chosen vehicle for doing so. The recent TV shows based on video games like Arcane and Cyberpunk have really pleased us. Hopefully, their popularity will serve as an inspiration for more fantastic animated shows based on video games in the future. What are your thoughts on Rebecca, or even this show in general? Let us know in the comments below. If you liked our content, then please don't forget to give us a like and subscribe to Marvelous Videos if you haven't already. Until next time, I'm Rylan. Have a good one, and be safe. Huh.